Tēnā koutou katoa, good evening, hello palava, and welcome to you all. Nā whaia ātawhai o Aotearoa, and te whānau ātawhai. I'm referring to those of you gathered here tonight as the Mercy family, because sisters have been here among you in Thorndon for 149 years, three months, and nine days. So I think that calls for familial terms. And a very special welcome to those of you who have gathered in other places in this country, and especially in Tonga and Samoa, to watch this presentation on the web or on the DVD. Talofa lava, malo elevei, tena koto katoa. Traditionally, our patronal feast day as Sisters of Mercy has been and still is tomorrow, the 24th of September. Today, we generally refer to it as Mercy Day. But what do we actually celebrate? What do our schools and communities celebrate? What do our institutions celebrate? Do we honour Mary? Do we honour Catherine? Or do we do a bit of both? So just take a moment now to talk to the person beside you and share these questions. What are some of the ways you have celebrated Mercy Day over the years? What is it that you've celebrated? And how will you celebrate tomorrow? <laughs> some of the devotions, 
And some of the titles which are keeping something womanly alive actually remain. Secondly, Mary should have a prominent role in the lives of Catholics in Aotearoa, New Zealand. On the 13th of January, 1838, Bishop Pompalia dedicated the whole country to Mary under her title of Assumption. In addition, the Immaculate Conception is the patronal feast of the Archdiocese. Now these two dogmas are to do with the beginning and the end of Mary's life. Her whole life was caught up in God's grace. We too can and should stand with Mary, our sister, in God's gracious embrace here in this land. At this point, I think it would be a nice idea to sing the words of Bishop Pompalia, Mo Maria. And I'd like to pray this prayer, I'd like us to pray this prayer, particularly for the people in Christchurch. Last night on TV1, I saw people feeling utterly abandoned, absolutely desperate, physically and emotionally exhausted. And I saw the council officer himself crying, completely overwhelmed by the enormity of the hopelessness of the situation. So let's pray this prayer, this hymn to Mary, keeping in mind the people of Christchurch. Washing and dressing very busily. 
The premises, therefore, were planned to contain dormitories for young women who, for want of proper protection, might be exposed to danger, a female poor school, and departments for ladies who might choose for any definite or indefinite time to devote themselves to the service of the poor without the restriction of vows, and remaining at liberty to visit their relatives or even to remain with them for a time in case of affliction or sickness. So there's nothing there about ransoming slaves, is there, in Catherine's dream? So having addressed those two problematic areas, I shall now begin the reclamation project by examining the first of the three focusing questions. Who is Our Lady of Mercy? Mary has and has been and is known by countless names, one of which is Our Lady of Mercy. Every historical period shapes Mary according to its own needs, and each image of Mary tells us as much about ourselves as it does about Mary. I'll just share with your neighbour some of the Marys that you know. Our Lady of, Our Lady of, and see if you can complete, complete those five circles, four circles. 